What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Today's video is all about expanding the fingerboard, right? A very common way to do that is to take a passage like this one we'll look at today from Scarlet Begonias and figure out everywhere on the fretboard you can play this exact same passage. And the cool thing about it is that each different section or different area on the fingerboard has its own unique tonal qualities. So with all that being said, let's jump right into it. Well, all right, guys. Today's video, we are back with this concept of expanding the fingerboard, right? And specifically, how we're going to approach this today is we are going to take one of my favorite passages from the Grateful Dead song, Scarlet Begonias, being... <laughs> identify every place on the fingerboard that we can play this passage. So let's go. So before we really see what's happening in this passage, let's first do a quick recap on what scale is being used. And that scale is the Mixolydian mode, right? A major scale, but with the flat seven degree. And since today we're in the key of B, that flat seven would be this A natural, right? That's one way you can play it. You can play it with your pinky. There's that flat seven again. you can do it right B major scale but with the flat seven degree so now that we've established this B mixolydian sound Let's take a look at example one, which we can call root position for this transition phrase, right? From Scarlet Begonias into Fire on the Mountain. So here it is, we can call it in root position. And so what's really happening is first we're playing like a B major arpeggio, root three, five, root, right? We can actually say it's a B7 arpeggio because you have that A natural. To an F sharp minor arpeggio with the 11th degree, that B, to now an A arpeggio with the sharp four, D sharp. Come back down, B, G sharp, E, B, right? we'll call root position, right? The next place we can play it, let's say, is we can go lower to this B second fret of the A string. So the first off we're gonna do is a B seven arpeggio. We have our B, D sharp, F sharp, 
B A to an F sharp minor arpeggio with the 11th degree that B to now a A major arpeggio with the sharp 4 and then descending essentially an E arpeggio. Right, same exact notes. I'm sure you've already heard the difference exact same phrases but totally different what they call timbres like thicknesses right down here say up here sorry it's a little thicker that b right as opposed to down here and in the heat of the battle that's all up to you because, for example, if you have a bass player who's playing this, to not be in the same frequency area as him, right? You can play it here. So we'll call that example two. Example three, we're going to go back to our B seventh fret of the low E string, but this time we're gonna approach it with our pinky. There's our B seven arpeggio, B, D sharp, F sharp, B, A, right? Is there F sharp minor? 11 and there's our descending a arpeggio and now e back to b right So right then and there, you have three places to play this exact same passage. How about that? Really cool, right? This is almost the same exact idea as triads, right? Picking one chord and playing it everywhere you can on the fingerboard. Like if you're playing B, we can play B here. Right? The more places you know where to play something, the easier it could be in the heat of battle because it doesn't matter where you are, you know what you're trying to aim for, if that makes sense. So now, as we look at example four, this could be actually the least useful one, maybe, <laughs> because of how low frequency it is, right? We're going to be mostly on the bottom three or four strings. Check this out. Right? Pretty muddy compared to something like this. But 
we're still nailing everything. You know what I mean? We have our B major, or sorry, our B7 arpeggio, our F sharp minor, to our A, descending our E, right? So far, so good, right? We have four places we can play this exact same transition from Scarlet into Fire on the Mountain. And finally now, let's take a look at maybe the most useful one because it's an octave higher than our root position one. So check this out. Example five, here we go, check this out. One octave higher from root position, let's say. Fingering up here could be a little tricky, right? Root, third of B, fifth of B, root B, 12th fret of the B string, the A, our seventh degree, F sharp minor, that B again, right? 12th fret of B, A, C sharp, E, D sharp, B, G sharp, E, B. are five places where you can play the exact same passage and each of them have their own unique flavor to them. And that is how you can slowly start expanding the fretboard, right? Figure out a passage or a chord or a two notes even and play it everywhere you can on the fingerboard. And the more you do that, slowly but surely, the fingerboard would open up and you'll have total domination. Well, all right guys, that is today's video on expanding the fingerboard using that passage from Scarlet Begonias, right? For example, whether it's that passage, a couple notes, or even chords, the best thing you can do to help yourself expand the fingerboard, right, is to figure out a root position for that phrase, chord, or passage, right? And then slowly figure out everywhere else on the fretboard that you can do it. And like we saw today, different positions have their different tonal qualities, right? So there's really no right or wrong area to play a segment, a sentence, a phrase, a chord, right? It all depends what type of sound do you wanna go for. So if you enjoyed today's video and really enjoyed this new picture quality, I got a new camera today, 4K, how about that? Uh, please press like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.